Let's say you want to program your very own C library. Well, as it so happens, I'm actually working on my own library right now. It is comprised of these two files right here. And what it does is that it simplifies the multiplication process in any code that you add this library to. But there's no sense into simply including these files in your project and recompiling the library every single time. I should make a assembled library package so that I could perhaps make a archive of it so that anybody can use a static representation of my library. Or I can make it a shared object so that system-wide everybody can utilize this library without every single one of them needing their own integrated version of my library. The question is, how am I going to get from this code to a library? Well, to compile the code, I'm going to use good old GCC, the GNU compiler. I'm going to compile my code, but I'm not going to link it. And I'm going to compile the source file. So this is going to compile the file and simply store it into an object file. If we search here, you can see that I have now a third file, mul.o. This is an object representation of my source file. Now, if I wanted to compile this into a shared object, what I can do is run gcc shared the object and output it to, let's say, libmul.so. If we look now, we have a library. It's as simple as adding this shared parameter. Now, you may also want to add this parameter right here. This parameter makes your compiled object be position independent. It makes your code position in independent. This means that once your code is compiled, any jumps uh, in the machine code will be generated on runtime. It'll be relative instead of static and basically just makes your shared object more shareable. Now if we were to look at the file type of our shared object, you'll see that we've compiled a 64-bit dynamically linked shared object and it's as simple as that. Now this shared object, if you wanted to install it, you would simply move it with the proper permissions to use slash user slash lib. In fact, if I go over here and I look at everything that exists, you can see that some libraries such as soil over here have their shared objects put here. Others are put into folders. This is uh, this is where libraries are installed by default. And then with the header file, you can place that into the slash users slash include folder within its own folder, or you can just plop it here on its own if it's very much a general file, but I wouldn't be so sure. So this is how to make a shared object, but if you wanted to make something a little more static, something that's compiled into any project that you include it in, well, to do that, you're gonna have to use the archiving tool, AR. AR allows you to create, modify, and extract from archives. So we're gonna use it to create an archive. You see here, AR is considered a binary utility because archives of the sorts are most often used as libraries holding commonly needed subroutines. So to use it, we're gonna, use, we're gonna run the command AR. Then we're gonna use three parameters, R, C, and S. The C will create the archive. The R will insert the file members into the archive with replacement. And S will write an object file index into the archive. And no, I, I don't necessarily know this by heart, but I know that you write RCS and it allows you to archive or create your archive of your library. The following option is the name of the library, so we'll call it libmol.a. And finally, the object file. And just like that, we've created our library. But let's say you want to compile a library for Windows as well. Well, not that I particularly suggest doing this. If you were so inclined, to do so, I suggest sticking on Linux and using Mingu to compile. Mingu offers a vast amount of utilities, such as GCC and AR, to compile an archive to Windows. You first start by putting in the CPU architecture, writing Mingu 
32. And then the compiler or the archiver that we're going to use, so GCC. And then we can just do what we did before, dash C and compile the file again. The reason we want to compile again the, the source file is because the last one was compiled for Linux. Now we've recompiled a new object folder for Windows. I suggest compiling all of these different versions into different folders and just creating a make file to make the whole process a little more automatic. Now that we've compiled the file, we can do exactly what we did before. So we'll reuse the GCC command here. Do dash shared, grab our object file and output it to mul.dll. And now you've created a shared object equivalent for Windows, the dynamically linked library. And if we check out the file, you'll see that it is indeed a DLL 64-bit for Windows. And if you wanted to create a static library, a .lib, it is exactly uh, the same as when we compiled with Linux, except now instead of doing dash GCC here, we do dash AR, just like we did earlier, RCS, mul.lib, and we grab our output file. And that's it. That is how you compile your library. Now let's try linking it. So just for fun, I'm going to completely delete the source file. So now this is it. I only have the header file and my compiled libraries. Currently, they're all in this example folder over here. I spend a bit of time debugging here, as you'll see shortly. But basically, just put all of the different libraries into different folders and make sure you're marking them correctly. So put some, separate them Windows, Linux, and shared and static. Just separate all of that. It'll make compiling a lot easier. So all of these files are within the example folder. Over here, I'm going to create a new main file. So over here, I'm including the standard input I output uh, header so that I can print. And I've included my custom library here. And then I'm going to print the results of A times B. I also write in the result, the A and B's values. So if I were to compile for Linux, this file uh, would get an error if I simply try to compile it like this because mol.h does not exist. So what I need to do, we should look in the example folder for the includes. And, you know, just because my libraries are there too, we'll look there for the library as well. Now, if I try to include, I won't get an error for the, in the included file, but I will get an error saying that mole is not defined, ah, but it is defined within the library. Now, our library here is called limmol.a. So to use this library, I simply do dash l mole because that's going to take, it, it knows it's a library, so it's gonna, it's gonna take this file here. Actually, it's, it's not gonna work because it might read in the shared. So I'm gonna just make a directory called shared and static. We don't even need the um, object file anymore either. So now our structure looks a little more like this. I put all the shared folder files in the shared, all the static ones in the static, and we have our header there. So now when we try to compile, we can grab the static. What we grab for the include, it's just an example. Then here, example. Over here, we're gonna use the static library and we're going to compile, we're going to grab the, multi, the, the library, compile main.c. So we're going to use GCC to compile main.c, use the, the header file that's in here. We're going to look for our header files in here, and we're going to look for our libraries in here. And then this is the library we want to use. If we try to compile this, it still doesn't, oh, okay, well, now we can try to compile it using the shared libraries and it will work. But if we try to run the application, it won't find our shared object. So you're going to have to place this somewhere that it'll find it, such as users slash lib. And what's really cool now is that remember we compiled for Windows as well. so. If we wanted to, we could use Mingu to compile our library. All right, I'm going to try separating them uh, 
into their own f folders. This is uh, what you get for not practicing before making a video. So now I put these two into two separate folders. Uh, and if I try compiling now using the static windows, ah, now it works. And you can see that it is exported our exe. If we use wine to execute, we get the same result. So there you have it. That's how you make a library. Uh, make sure that you compile everything in a more organized fashion than I've done in this tutorial. To help me compile, I've created this little make file here that kind of simplifies the different parts so that I can just state how I want to compile it, if it's a library, if it's static, and it'll place everything in its own folders. It's currently on GitLab if you would like to contribute and make it better or use it for yourself. I'll put a link down in the description. I call it the universal C make file and it, uh, it, it's super organized. You put all your source files in here and it'll compile all of them. It'll put everything where it's supposed to be. One last thing to note is that you must remember that you do need the include files if uh, well, when, when compiling, either you need to include the, li the, the file, well, like any library, you know how libraries work. Have a good day. I hope that you help. I, ho uh, I hope that I helped and that you can make great libraries in the future. If you'd like me to cover something that maybe you think I can help with, let me know. I hope you have a nice day.